Hi guys, it's Lisa Murphy, the Ooey Gooey Lady, and I am here today to start a three-part video conversation with you about what I am calling strategies that are keeping the play conversation moving forward. Um, and the impetus for this, though, where this um, came from a while back, oh yes, it says wine slayers, just in case you're curious, because um, we slay the wine. Anyway, um, so a couple years back over the summertime, um, I got two questions from people who lived 3,000 miles away from each other and they both essentially asked exactly the same question. They said, what are you finding is working in order to keep, not in order, but what, what is working in keeping the conversation going in regard to the importance of play? And they both asked this like within days of each other. And I'm like, clearly this is maybe something we have to, you know, put some, put some thought into. And so I did. And what I realized is that there's actually like a three point strategy, not system. I don't like that word system, but like three strategies that have assisted um, over the last few years uh, in, in keeping this going. And I didn't really stop. To, to realize it until this question came about, but we've probably been doing all three of these things that I'm gonna share with you um, for a considerably long time, but I'm gonna start with the one that I think, one is the one that I think we started doing first, uh, two, so it's been out there a little bit longer and I've gotten actually some feedback from people through the years that 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 kind of um, uh, corroborates, is that a word? Uh, the, the success of it. So three strategies that I'm going to share with you that are keeping the conversation of the importance of play moving forward. The first strategy that I'm going to share with you today is what I call the binder challenge. And if you've been hanging out with me at all, if you've been to any of the workshops, probably in the last five, six, seven years, um, you have heard me mention, look at you like my props, it's like a new thing, um, the binder challenge. And the binder challenge in the workshop, I talked to you about it um, in, in my new playbook. I actually, the whole front intro of the book gives you an overview of the binder challenge. If you need more specific minutia, feel free to send me an email, ltac at ooeygooey.com, or you can always find me on my website, ooeygooey.com. When it just ooeygooey, you'll find me nowadays, thank God, that changed. But anyway, um, <laughs> back in the day, you got different stuff if you Googled ooey gooey, but we don't need to get back into that. So the binder challenge in a nutshell, and, and, and if you've been with me before, you know one of the things I say a lot is, is don't overthink this. I, I really don't, and uh, nor do I want it to sound like I'm giving you a homework assignment, although it might appear as though that's what this is. I want you to get a binder, just a binder like you used to use in school. Um, nowadays they got that clear coding thing in the front. You can like type something and stick it in, and that's what I want you to make. This is gonna be the cover of your binder and it's going to say playful learning equals readiness presenting the evidence. So this is going to go in the front of your binder. And from this point forward, if you're so inclined to accept the binder challenge, what you're going to do is, is anytime you find an, an article, a letter to the editor, uh, a book that you might read, you, you're going to copy. Well, you're not going to copy the book. That's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. But copy the, the front of the book and the, or the title page or the author page or the ISBN or the copyright. Just a way to capture it. And the idea here is that Anything that comes on your radar from this point forward that reinforces the importance and the power of play as a vehicle for school readiness is going to go in your binder. It can be something like totally scientific and official, a peer-reviewed you know, research report that you found in a journal. Um, it could be something you found in the newspaper. It could be something from a trade magazine. Anything that's reinforcing what you're out there advocating for, and you're gonna put it in your binder. And there's a couple reasons why this is so important, and I think the main one is that it starts to show that this way of being with children is not just a personal preference, right? This isn't just what Lisa Murphy wants you to be doing. This is what the research shows. This is what our history shows. This is the, this is what is proved in our research in the importance of play. And it's not just what I want, right? That's My ego isn't that needy. So it, it's more than just me saying that this is important. So. What the vision I have in my head is that somebody walks into your classroom or somebody walks into your program and is like, play? What do you mean you're still playing? We gotta get them ready. And you can say, you know what? We are advocates of playful learning. And, and this is what it looks like. That's you, you know, pointing to your classroom. And this is what supports it. And that's you pointing to the binders. This is what supports that. It's not because it's Fun. It's not because it makes everybody happy. It's not because it's messy. It's because this is the research that supports this. This 
is what good practice looks like. And this is what supports it. Do you see what I mean? Like it's outside of you. It's not just what I want. It might be what I want, but I'm able to show that it's not just me saying it. So what ends up happening is that your binder starts to get thick, especially if you're in a program and all of the teachers start collaborating on this. All of a sudden, your little binder with two handouts from a, from a conference turns into, you know, oh my gosh, we need another binder. Oh my gosh, we need another binder. Um, a couple schools have hived their binders off as they got so fat. Uh, one school hived it off to the four domains of developmentally appropriate practice, if you remember the video that I posted last time. Um, so they have the cognitive development binder, the language and literacy, and the physical, and the social emotional. So those individual binders are filled with all of the evidence and research that shows how important those four things are. Um, another school that I worked with, they hive their binders off into the centers that they have in that particular program. So they have like a block binder, an art binder, a why we go outside binder, a dress up binder. I mean, if you could imagine like all the different areas, a sensory tub binder, all of that is in there. So if you get those real specific questions like, hey, you know, how come my kid never wants to come inside? Or hey, how come my kid is always in the block area, but never doing this? You're able to show how important those particular areas are in deepening um, all four domains within developmentally appropriate practice. So the binder challenges a, a big huge tool for your tool belt fuel for your fire while you're out there advocating for uh, play based early childhood educational environments um, what else do I want to say about the the binder challenge um, I do assist you as often as I can um, when I'm on Facebook I'll post uh, articles you know hey read this and put it in your binder hey read this and put it in your binder um, so I don't just like throw you to the wolves I mean you can go out there actually my tumblr blog although I don't really I'm not really active on it but if you get on the Miss Lisa musings and mayhems we just type ooey gooey lady on on tumblr um, you you'll get it and you'll be just like oh my god you know like they're all right here just type in for your binder and they're all right there um, I'm having a brain fart. The other thing that I want you to know is that you're not allowed to put anything in your binder until you read it, right? You can't just be like, oh, Lisa said, print this out. You gotta read it, you gotta read it. You gotta be ready to talk about it because, right? You know, you could have a parent come in and say, hey, I wanna get a couple copies of that particular article or, hey, I'm wondering how this article specifically relates back to my kid and if you haven't read it, you are not knowledgeable and you are gonna look like that, so you don't want that. Um, the other thing is you probably shouldn't start bragging about your binder until you've got at least maybe 10 articles in there. You know, if you've only got like a big old fat binder and one article in it, that's really not increasing the credibility of, <laughs> of your argument at, at all. So um, I did have somebody ask me one time, oh, Lisa, do you have a binder? And, and I said, yes. And I, I have four, four pull drawers of file cabinets in my office and uh, so my binder has morphed considerably um, through the years and it's very hard when you have to move it um, but at the end of the day what I wanted to share with you is binder challenge number one um, so if somebody comes in and is questioning what you're doing and not even in a negative way I think that's very important to realize too people can just have honest legitimate you know inquiries as to you know talk to me about what is supporting this here in the classroom and the more knowledgeable you are about the research that's already out there you know the the more educated more knowledgeable you're going to be able to sound uh, many many years ago I stopped defending play in the sense of trying to prove that play is important we have years and years and years and years of research that show that play is the vehicle for school readiness so instead of getting unstuck consistently on that treadmill of defending what's already been proven I share with you today and offer for you uh, a, a suggestion that will assist you in actually connecting people to the evidence and the research that's already out there so you can now get down to the business of implementing what the research says instead of constantly having to defend it. So that for you today is the Binder Challenge shared with you by Lisa Murphy, the ooey gooey lady, and I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Thanks.